What up, peeps? Welcome back to September. Man, I haven't done that in a while. But I'm back on that downrange gaming tip. Got some Halo 4 gameplay for you. And keep in mind, I played this game three times. The, the gameplay you're seeing is my fourth try at it. So I'm not the best Halo player, but give me like two or three weeks and I'm going to be pwning people. I guarantee. You. I just got to practice. I'm pretty good at video games. Like if I practice a little bit, I get nasty because I'm very competitive. But this commentary, as you can see, is not a live commentary. I tried live commentary on the other t three times of me trying Halo, and it just came out really boring to me. So I thought, all right, let me give you guys some more military stories because I know that's what you love and miss, and I haven't done one in a while. So let's jump into it. Pretty sure I left you off at talking about being stationed in Germany. I don't think I told you guys after Germany. So... If I did, let me know in the comments. Remind me what I talked about if I talked about things twice. But I'm going to try my best. All right. So I was in Germany. If you heard all the stories. And I did get orders to leave Germany. And I had to go to Korea afterwards. So I had did two years in Germany. And now it's time to go to Korea. So from my transition from Germany to Korea, I actually got some time to go home and go and leave for 30 days. And then I was going to go to Korea. And that 30 days was when I met Gina. And um, I know Gina wants to talk, be in the commentary with me when we talk about that whole month when we met each other and everything. So I'm going to skip over that until maybe the next commentary or a couple from now. So with that being said, I had orders to Korea and I was home on leave. So I shipped after 30 days, I shipped off to Korea, which let me tell you, that flight was long as hell. I had a layover I had like two layovers <clears throat> one was like in Chicago or something I can't remember but the second layover was in Japan and then from Japan I went to Incheon I think that's the name of the airport I might be pronouncing it wrong but that's in Korea and total travel time was somewhere along the lines of like this is with all the layovers and stuff like 23 24 hours of actual travel I think the longest flight was 12 12 hours when I was going to Japan and then Japan to Korea was a little bit shorter but I remember when I got into Japan I was like yo this is dope Japan is dope I didn't get the van like venture out of the airport but just by the the airport itself it looked really futuristic any who's old we so I get into Korea after 20 some hours of traveling I'm beat you know I just hate traveling just going to LA for six hours that sucks so doing that was really bad so get in there, I'm miserable. All I want to do is get to wherever I got to go and sleep. And I'm sure the base isn't close to this airport I'm at. Go over to get my luggage. Waiting at the carousel for my luggage. Waiting, waiting. All the luggage is there except for mine. I'm like, what the French Montana? Where is my shit? And like that just, that's everything. All my stuff is in there. Everything. I had maybe a little carry-on. But, you know, essentials are all in my suitcase. You know, I go to the airline. <clears throat> talk to them about where my suitcase, you know, what's going on. And they're like, well, here, we'll call you. I'm like, well, you can't call me. I don't, I'm, I don't have a phone in Korea. Like, I don't even know where I'm, like, the phone number of the base I'm going to yet because I haven't been there. So I don't even know how you're going to contact me. So I was like, here, give me your number. When I get there, I'll call you guys and see if you have my suitcase. Because they told me that I could wait around for hours and even maybe days until it shows up. But when it does, they'll deliver it to wherever I'm at. And that's going to be at uh, Osan Air Base. So I had to hop on this military bus to take me to the base. And once I got to the base, there was a sponsor there waiting for me, which was good because I've been to, like, when I went to Ramstein, I had a sponsor. But when I got to Louisiana, I didn't. But sponsors are usually, like, a troop that's from your, like, your flight or, you know, your job. Me being a cop, I had another cop there waiting for me. He got me set up in a hotel, got me set up with my new squadron, all that jazz. But... I, all I want, and, and I got there, and I'm like, look, dude, I just want to sleep, and I don't have my shit. My fucking suitcase is missing, and I'm pissed. And he's like, a, he was like, he was understanding. He was like a staff sergeant, but I was, and I was younger ranking, but I was just like, I told him the business. I'm like, dude, look, I'm not going to be able to, in process, I have nothing with me. My uniforms are all missing. So he's like, all right, cool. Just go to a hotel, sleep, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll help you with getting your suitcase. So the next day, I call the airline. I'm like, yo, do you guys got my suitcase? And they do. I'm like, oh, sweet. And I guess this happens a lot with the military troops or suitcase gets lost. So they knew the, the deal. They're like, look, we'll drop it off at the gate. 
you know, um, at your base. I'm like, okay, so I, I haven't I haven't been at this base. Cops work the gates, so I have a little connection. I could just call the gate up and be like, yo, can you guys call me when my suitcase gets there? Like, okay, we got you. My suitcase shows up. They have a patrol come out and get me, like a, like a law enforcement patrol. Take me over there, because I don't have a car or nothing. Take me there, get my suitcase. My freaking suitcase is all duct tape. I'm like, what the, f what the hell is going on? It was dirty as hell. It's like they freaking, it, it looked like it fell out of the plane. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, I, there was no one to talk to because they just dropped it off. There's just the gate guards here, like, there. And they're like, there's your suitcase. And it looked like my suitcase just fell apart. All my stuff must have fell out. Luckily, nothing was missing. And uh, everything was in there. But to go for, like, a day and to start in processing to a base in the clothes I wore for 20-some hours, you know how smelly you get from a plane and dirty. You just feel gross. Nowhere to wash it. It was just a miserable start to my year in Korea. So I talk about like in processing and I wanted to kind of go into a little depth about exactly what in processing is for a new troop on a base. Well, I, well, like a new troop to the base. I was a new troop. I've been in the Air Force for maybe five years already at that point. Or was it four years? Maybe four years. So when you in process to a base, you got to go through tons and tons of BS, I call it, but it's stuff that you really should get to know. For like, there, there's like one part you'll have a meeting and you learn about the culture in Korea and how you should be acting and stuff like that. And like, um, one and it, 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 we always every base I've been to, we always have an in processing thing about STDs. You know, troops are out there, they're having sex. You know, and and in Korea, I guess uh, around the area, the Korean girls and such really like military men. So they would have this uh, in processing meeting about STDs and they would just show you a bunch of pictures of STDs that people have caught. They claim it was here in, or there in Korea, but it could have been anywhere. They just really wanted to scare the troops to try and not make sure they weren't having too much sex or unprotected sex off base. But it's really gross. And they talked about this kind of STD called black gonorrhea. And they said it's only in Korea. I don't know. This it, it seemed like we all laughed about it later, but it was they they just wanted they just wanted to scare the troops when they got in. That's what they love to do. So on another note, <laughs> off subject, if you guys are watching the Halo gameplay, I don't remember if I did great this time. I think I did all right, especially for my fourth time ever playing. Oh, I got this dope gun too. I don't even know what that gun's called. Someone tell me. But I wanted to know like some good tactics, maybe some good loadouts. Some advice for me to get my skills up. Put in the comments, all you Halo players. You know, let me know. So next, maybe next Halo gameplay, it could be about my actual gameplay on how freaking epic I am. I didn't even realize this was the end of the, the gameplay. So, you know, show me some love. Hit the thumbs up. Give me some more suggestions if you want more military stories. I'm going to finish talking about and processing. Until then, peace on the streets. Sigh.